I'm back working on this 17th century bench and the lower structure is, has been assembled, not glued, but all the pieces have been milled out, the joinery is complete, and now I'm working on the decoration. These stretchers have quite a bit of molding and inlay, and then there's this side apron up here that also has a molded face with some inlay work. The drawing for that side apron piece is here, the component from the SketchUp model. And then looking at the end view, straight on orthographic, you get a picture like this and obviously it's got a lot of dimensions on it because I was locating all these little different places where the molding shapes were uh, changed and so I this is not full size here is I just printed this out larger size so I could see it a little bit better but this is the full size template glued onto a thin sheet of poster board and <clears throat> it's this shaping that I need to get on the uh, face of the apron. Now there are many ways of, of creating those shapes. You could buy router bits I suppose and, and uh, do it just with router bits. Um, there's only two pieces in this bench with with this molding shape. Uh, also you could do this with uh, hand multiplanes with different shapes of bits. I don't have the router bits and I don't have a molding plane that has all the kinds of things that would work here. Uh, also a set of wooden planes would, would help. But I don't have a full set. I have some but, but not enough to, to do this. So I'm doing it with carving tools. There's only two pieces that have this shaping and I've already done one of the aprons uh, both the shaping of the molding as you can see on the end here and then the inlay work with ebony and holly triangles alternating. So this was done with with carving tools and also after I carved it I, I made some small uh, scraper blades to, to get into this, some of these places. Um, I used these to smooth out some of these carving uh, channels and I shaped them based on the, on the full size template. It's a little piece that just fits over this part of the molding shape and I can, after I carve some channels, then I can use this to smooth it out. So that's the way I will be doing this. At the, at the, on the bottom edge, bottom edge there's this little bevel on the bottom and then a cove. I'll do that first. To make that little bevel I'm going to use this shoulder plane here to just 
hold it uh, oh, a little bit less than a 45, I suppose. And I'm coming down by eye. I'm not going to be scientific about this uh, bevel. It's, that's pretty close. A little bit more on this end. Yeah. And there's the bevel. That's all I need. And the next thing is to, to do this little cove shape. And on my drawing, I also show the bits, the, the carving tools that I'm using. For example, a number eight, seven millimeter will be used to make this cove. And I'm just going to go down through the, try to stay in the middle here of this flat area. I, I didn't mention that I also have some channeling out here, just a flat channel. It's only a sixteenth of an inch deep. And that holds these triangular inlay pieces. And there's also a little flat down here that I did on the router table. That was the easiest way to create those flat channels. And so I'm in one of those flat channels right now down at the bottom of the apron. And just want to get a nice cove shape down here. It looks like I'm going with the grain. I didn't know whether I was going to have to turn this thing around and work from the other direction, but this direction seems to flow pretty well. And I just recently honed these carving tools again because you just can't have them too sharp. They, they really, really helps a lot on, when they're freshly honed. In the la at the last stage I honed it on leather with some compound, some, some type of compound that kind of embeds in the leather and it really gives that edge the final touch. So I think I've done enough with the number eight carving tool. Now I can use this little scraper to just smooth it out if, if necessary. Even it out. And I think that's about enough that takes care of that. Now the next thing that I want to do there's a little cove right in here and up here. And to start those, I've positioned a pencil line. I set my marking gauge to a dimension that uh, represents that transition there where the cove is. And so I've got these marks and straight lines that I've penciled in at the strategic places here. And I can use a V tool. This is a number 15 V tool to go to create a little start to create this little cove piece. So I'll just drive this down the the groove that the marking gauge created. Alright. Got a 
around that bead, I've got this little scraper. I make these from old bandsaw blades, and then I uh, file off the teeth, and they use different files to create the shape. I um, smooth these out on the water stones so that I've got a polished surface on both faces and I also uh, work the inner edge here with some diamond files to, to get it smoothed out. So that should help to just shape this little bead here. going right down the, the channel that I created with the carving tool. Then there is a cove, a wider cove here and in, in between where I've been working. And I use a number 512 millimeter to achieve that shape. And I'll just go down through the middle. I've located an edge with a marking gauge. So I know where to end that cove. This is ash. The original, and this is local California, California type of ash, which is really nice stuff to work. Um, I used it a lot for Windsor chairs. And the original of this piece, of course, was done in oak. This is an English piece, 17th century, so that would be a very typical lumber species that would be used for this project. And they were heavy pieces. I just want to expand that shape a little bit. I don't remember if I made a scraper blade to work this shape at the end or just leave it with a carver. I think I just decided to leave this with a carver. And yeah, you get the idea there. Okay, I've used a marking gauge to mark in the location of these other two lines I need here to make this little cove in this area. Now there's one other cove that now goes in to this 
location right here. And I'm going to use on my drawing, I show that that's a number eight. It's this one right here, number eight, seven millimeter. So, here's my carving tool. Let me see how that scrapes out there. Yes. Okay. But that does it. So the next step is to make four little triangular pieces of black and also white ebony poly triangles that then are glued in inlay into this rectangular uh, channel. <laughs> 